Hi, my name is Hannah and welcome back to my channel. I am going to wrap up the rest of the books that I have read the month of March. So let's jump into that. So I read a book called The Maid by Anita Prose and I think I got this recommendation from Fran at Fran Nook in the Pages and um, I was really excited about this. This was interesting. It follows um, our main character, Molly, and she is a maid at a fancy hotel and she um, one day at work, she finds a dead body in a hotel room. So it follows kind of her adventures. Is she gonna get framed for the murder? What's going on in this hotel? And the interesting thing is that she, Molly, doesn't have all the social skills and doesn't quite understand everything that's going on. And so there's more than meets her eye in this book. Um, I really liked it. I thought it was kind of an interesting way to approach kind of a murder mystery type book because instead of knowing, like, you know how sometimes you read a murder mystery or something and you kind of get, they had a bad feeling about this guy and you, you get those vibes. This one, you know, she doesn't read people very well. So she's like, this guy is amazing and this person is great and this is what's going on and she doesn't maybe get kind of like the context of what's actually happening and you can kind of put it together and try to solve it and it was told just very wholesomely and very cute. I very much enjoyed my time going through this like just a really fun book. Um, I feel like the only drawback that I've seen on this is just some people feel like it's trying to portray a character who may be on the autistic spectrum and some people felt like it was maybe a bit of a caricature or not a very accurate portrayal and so I mean I think that's kind of maybe more on an individual basis if you feel like this is giving good representation or if it is a bit of more of a caricature I would be interested to hear thoughts on this um because I'm not quite sure but while I read this I just was delighted the whole time and I enjoyed it and I enjoyed kind of Molly her grandmother had recently passed away and a lot of her ways of dealing with the world were in little cutesy sayings that her grandmother had told her and just watching her figure out how to relate to the world and you know like okay my grandmother one time told me finders keepers so I guess that means that this is okay in this situation and like just trying to work things out I really liked that I thought it was cute fun very like uplifting you know <laughs> like not often do I say a book about a murder is uplifting but this felt very uplifting and kind of about you know like and finding your own family and there were a lot of things um that I really liked about it so I do recommend this one it was a lot of fun so a five-star nonfiction read for me was The Doctors Blackwell How Two Pioneering Sisters Brought Medicine to Women and Women to Medicine and this is by Janice P. Nimura and I really liked this book. Okay, so this is telling the story about these two sisters, and this was kind of back in like Civil War era. It goes from England and uh, to the United States, and they are these two sisters who were, um, are they the first? Well, yeah, so she got a, um, she became, Elizabeth Blackwell became the first woman in America to receive a medical degree, and just kind of talking about their journey and how they, uh, you know, made a women's only hospital and all sorts of different things um, that were really amazing for the time. And I mean, the reason I give this five stars is because I kept thinking about it for quite a while. So talking, like learning about the sisters and their views and their lives, and like, it just, they had a lot of views that were very almost to me seemed very contradictory like they weren't super into women's suffrage but they thought that women should be in medical schools and they thought that women should be more involved in medicine but they didn't think men needed to do anything about that they thought that like well specifically elizabeth thought that women just needed to be less stupid and figure things out more and kind of laid all the blame of society's ills on the women and not and it, that it was their fault for lacking the drive and that they had become complacent. And so I thought it was interesting to kind of see that while they did so many good things, they had so many maybe views that 
as a modern audience, we might not understand, but even during the time period, a lot of, you know, uh, suffragettes and things wanted to claim them, right, as part of their movement. And that was really, you know, Elizabeth Blackwell didn't really want to be that progressive. She just felt very called to be in the medical field. And so it made me think a lot just on like the role of people that are imperfect in moving forward social change, right? Like, it's amazing that they were able to graduate from medical school and do all this good for women in medicine and really help a lot of people. Does that mean that they were perfectly like in line with what we think they should have been? No, they, but they did a lot of good. And I thought that it was kind of a good reminder for me because I think you see a lot in the news like, oh, this person, they did so many good things for charities, but they said this mean thing or, you know, like it, I mean, I, there's obviously some more extreme examples that I don't think are great, but like, um, I think in general, realizing that people can do good even when they aren't always perfect. And so I really did enjoy this as kind of a historical piece, but also in kind of just the thought of what um, difference women can make and difference people can make in the time they're in, even when they're not, you know, campaigning for social justice in all sorts of areas. So I really enjoyed this one. I do recommend it. I thought it was very interesting and definitely about like a subject that I just haven't read very much about. So definitely recommend this one. Another very interesting one. Um, I read Bird by Bird, Some Instructions on Writing and Life by Anne Lamott. And I think this was a recommendation from Brandon at Brandon's Bookshelf. So I will put a link to his channel down below. I really enjoyed this book. So this is Anne Lamott. She is an author and she's taught a lot of classes on how to write and she's she's kind of giving all of her advice for writing books and as well as like mixing in some of her own personal like memories and thoughts. And this I found to be very inspiring. I have never, I mean, I'm the weird kid, I've never really wanted to be an author. That just I love to read books, but I don't necessarily want to um, make the books. So, uh, but this inspired me to feel like I could write something, even if it's just as an exercise, I could get something out and really practice that. And I really thought that it was useful, even to people who aren't interested in writing. Um, there was a lot of good life advice and just interesting as a reader too to see all the work and the different moving pieces that go into making a book and what and even just like me kind of evaluating books to see some different kind of categories to look at it was very interesting I did enjoy this I don't know if every single person would love this but um I think it's written very accessibly so anybody could read this and enjoy it um, but if you are an aspiring writer, I think you would love this book. I think that it has so many good and like concrete things that you can do to improve your writing. And um, that's, that's always what I think of with self-help books is that if you have um, concrete things that you can do, then the self-help book is worthwhile. I don't know if this is really counts as self-help book, but it, a self-help book, but I feel like it really had some good step-by-step -step things that you can do to get into writing, and I really did enjoy it. Okay, and then to end up, let's just go with a book that I don't recommend and I really hated. So I read the book My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moshve, and it just... It, the reason I finished this book is because it was kind of like a train wreck where I just couldn't look away but I also wanted to kind of know what happened and see if it ever had a point um but I never felt like it did this is following a woman who has had some hard things in her life and just she wants to be happy but she can't so she is going to do everything in her power to sleep through an entire year and then she feels like at the end of the year she can come back refreshed like reborn and ready to live life and so, and this is taking place at, in like 2001 is where it's kind of set. I, and this, the author never fails to remind us that 
the girl is young and hot and pretty even when she's sleeping for a year she's still really hot and i'm like okay how many times do you have to tell us oh yeah it's in first person and it's like oh yeah i'm so skinny and i've lost all my muscle tone but i'm still really hot like I, it got annoying and honestly i just didn't realize that it would be so focused on that she was taking so many pharmaceuticals to keep herself asleep and i at certain points i felt like the book turned into like a laundry list of um medications that she was on and i mean i think there's some good like there's some societal commentary in there on how easy it is to access unnecessary medications and like hack doctors and i just i kind of thought that i knew where the book was heading on maybe there was going to be a message about like you can't sleep through your life you need to move forward and try to take advantage of it now or something but i never got that i just i mean if you want a book that's kind of boring and has no real point this is great because really i don't know what i expected from a book about a girl who's trying to sleep through her life um but this is i guess what you would expect Fact. I don't know. I just thought that it was going to have maybe some sort of deeper meaning or revelation and I didn't get it. So if you've read this book and you got some deeper meaning out of it, please let me know. I just, it was hard to read. And then she has this best friend that is just checking up on her and is kind of worried about her because, you know, she's trying to sleep away her life and she's so mean to her. Like the, the main character just has no redeeming qualities that I can find. So not my favorite. Um, I don't recommend this one. Just avoid it. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any thoughts on these books, please leave me a comment down below. I would love to hear any opinions, good or bad, about these books. And um, that was the rest of the books that I have read for the month of March. And um, I have some other videos that go through the books that I have read earlier in the month. So go check those out. And I will be back in April with some more book wrap ups.